Today I want to talk about getting your greenhouses ready for spring. For me this is a full step process. Step one, completely empty the greenhouse. Get out the staging, get out any big pot plants you've got in there etc. And really go to town on the soil or if you've got a brick floor clean that up but get the base absolutely sterile. We're lucky enough that we have frogs in our greenhouses so they get evicted but you know what frogs are a sign that there's things for frogs to live on i.e you know small invertebrates etc and that means that we've not got a poisonous toxic environment which given that the greenhouses produce food i'm kind of glad of so sort out the floor and wash down the interior and exterior and i like to use jay's fluid uh, it's a weird stuff I'll show you a can of it in a minute. It's for exterior disinfection. And it smells a bit like coal tar. Very odd smell, but I quite like it. Step three then will be to drain any water butts that come off the gutters of the greenhouse. And I'll show you ours in a bit. Because once you've got disinfectant in them, which you will do if you wash down the exterior with jays, you really don't want to be using that water to water your plants. In step four, and that's going to be the bulk of this video, that's about killing everything that's in the cracks and the crevices, the mould spores and the lichen and all the other little weirdness that you can't get to with manual cleaning. And to do that we use a sulphur candle. And a sulphur candle burns sulphur, which creates sulphur dioxide, which is toxic to living things. Effectively in the, in the presence of water it becomes an acid. You can buy them in garden centres, or you can make them for a quarter of the price. So the thrust of this video today will be to show you the equipment I use for cleaning, show you how to make a sulphur candle, and show you one at work. Okay, this is how we clean down the outside. This stuff, Jay's fluid. Advertised as kills bird fleas, you can guess when I bought that. But I've just finished it now. When you put it in water, it goes this bizarre brown-grey colour. That's not dirt, it's that colour from the get-go. Very weird. Um, but really does do a good job of disinfection. One of the best things I find to do the job is one of these. This is a telescopic squeegee. Squeegee on one side, sort of slightly abrasive sponge on the other. And to get to the tops of the roofs, etc. I find that's the best tool for the job. So I clean the whole thing up with that and then I spray it down with clean water from the garden hose to get it cleaned up. And you know, it ends up looking pretty good. So this is the interior view of the greenhouse and as you can see, it's been weeded. And the staging that was in this greenhouse has been removed to our second greenhouse and we do tend to swap them backwards and forwards each year. Uh, so it's been dug over and shortly I'm going to put the sulphur candle in here. Having done all of this, because we have a soil base to our greenhouses, I will add compost and other organic material to improve the soil before spring planting. But there's no point in doing that and then burning sulphur candles, so we'll do that afterwards. So as you can see, we gutter our greenhouses and we gather the water into water butts at the corner. Now clearly I have contaminated that water butt with Jay's fluid. So I will drain that and rinse it out and then we'll allow it to gather some nice clean fresh water ready for spring watering where it's to hand. Welcome to the workshop. The process of making a sulphur candle is absurdly simple. If you buy a commercial one, it will have granulated sulphur. It will probably have something like a waxed paper wick in the middle. And all you're trying to do is get a quantity of sulphur, catch it on fire, and once it's caught on fire and it's hot enough, it will burn anyway. It doesn't need the wick constantly like a candle. And what happens is it puts out a gas called sulphur dioxide, which is inimical to life and will kill off little bugs, uh, nasty insects you don't want, mold spores, 
those kind of things that can cause disease and problems in your greenhouse. So to create a wick, all I do is take an old piece of cloth, a bit of old towel in this case, always useful in the workshop, and I soak it in paraffin. Not petrol, you'll blow yourself up. But paraffin burns nice and steady and slow. What you've created here, in effect, is the equivalent of a lamp wick. I'm going to need an old tin. I've got in the habit of using treacle and golden syrup tins, but to be honest, any tin will work. An old washed out baked bean tin would be perfectly fine. And then simply get yourself some powdered sulphur, often sold as flowers of sulphur. Any chemical supplier, eBay, Amazon, anywhere will, will sell you this stuff. The amount in here is 800 grams. That's enough to do at least three decent sized greenhouses of the sort of 10 by 8 size that we have. Then work the powder in trying to keep the wick vaguely central but again not overly important and whilst I'm doing that I will explain that sulfur has plenty of other uses too you can use it in the garden to acidify your soil and if you're trying to grow things like cranberries and blueberries a relatively small amount of sulfur added to the soil on a regular basis greatly assist in getting the right pH level that you need for those bog type acid loving plants. So as you can see still plenty of that left it wasn't full to begin with enough to do another greenhouse. Now what we'll do next is move to the greenhouse watch before we light this you need to be able to seal your greenhouse up. So if you've got any louvers maybe tape a piece of plastic over them if you've got any gappy um, sealing vents, again, just seal them up with a little bit of tape because you're trying to contain the gas that this sulfur candle will create. What we will do is put like a half brick or something for this to stand on because when the sulfur is burning, that gets really hot. Um, so we don't want to scorch the soil. It doesn't matter terribly with a soil floor. But if you've got a tile floor or a brick floor, definitely put something down to insulate it before you light the candle. We'll go and have a look at it in place. Okay, here we are in the greenhouse. So it's a little damp because I washed it all down with Jay's fluid today. As you can see, the tin is sat on a stone tile just for safety. That tin is in the middle of the greenhouse and everything's been removed. Now, I can't stress this enough. This gas it gives off is toxic. That's why it works. Don't breathe it. Don't let your pets or wildlife near it. I'm doing it later in the evening so that you know I can be sure that it's not going to cause any problems for anything. Right. That's it. Now we get out. Okay. I'm outside the greenhouse now with the doors closed. And you can see what appears to be smoke coming off the top of the sulfur candle. In reality, that is sulfur dioxide, the toxic gas I was talking about. And that will build up to the point of being visible, almost like a fog, inside your greenhouse. You should notice that around the wick there's almost like a, a hollow forming. And that is the sulfur melting and catching fire. It will appear at a time that the sulfur candle has gone out. It hasn't. Don't worry about that. Don't go back in, because when you open the door, you're going to let all the sulfur dioxide out and possibly cause yourself harm. What happens is the sulfur melts. You see that little puff as though it's gone out? But now look, there's a little flame come back. And actually you get very little visible flame from burning sulfur. Um, but if you notice it, if there is almost anything like smoke still coming off, like you can see here, it is still a light and it is working. This will take several hours. I leave the greenhouse shut up for 24 hours after lighting one of these. So just walk away and enjoy the smell which is a little bit like bonfire night because sulphur is part of what goes into making gunpowder in fireworks. 
Okay guys, so that is the candles just starting. More later. Alright, I promise that you should be able to see the effects of the gas. This greenhouse is one I cleaned down a few weeks ago. This one is the one with the sulphur candle in it. As you can see, it's almost completely opaque. Absolutely full of that sulphur gas, which is getting into every nook and cranny. What it's doing is killing anything like mold spores, blight, aphids, any little nasties that are lurking in hard to reach places. I'll let that go overnight and I'll air it out well, dig some compost in around the edges and we'll have our tomatoes in that this year but it'll be clean and clear and absolutely sparkling ready for the new year's growing season. I hope that's proved useful and shown you how to save a few bob. If it is useful to you, please click the like button down below, the little thumbs up sign and if you want to see more of this type of content hit subscribe and hit the notify button that looks like a little bell. Thanks for watching and have a lovely day.